Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you today. We're going to lift up the Lord. We want to teach you a new song this morning. So you listen in, and when you're ready, you jump in and join us. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. Call. Let's sing this together. Show us your glory. Sing it. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Sing it again. Come on, sing it out. Show us, Lord. Show us, show us, show us your glory. our prayer today, Lord, that you would fill our hearts with your glory and with your goodness, fill this place with your presence, be exalted on our praise today, Lord Jesus. We love you. We worship you. Let's sing this together. One thing we ask. Lord, come and change our lives. Arise, 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 arise. Come on, arise, take your place, be in one on our praise. Arise, King of Kings, Holy God, as we Arise, arise, 
Let's pray together. Father, thank you this morning that you inhabit the praise of your people and that you are in this very room. And Lord, you've, you've given us the promise that if we lift you up, you draw us unto yourself. So Lord, we lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. Lord, I don't know the needs of the people in this room today. But you do. Draw them to yourself. And teach them how to worship. Teach them to be broken and to live by faith. Lord, draw me today unto yourself and teach me that that you have for me to know in this worship time. Thank you for John and Angie and their family coming to be a part of us. And I pray, God, that they would no humility bowed before you and that you would use him as we learn to worship with him. Help us put our arms around them as they put their arms around us. And we dedicate them to you today in Jesus' name. Amen.
Listen to Psalm 103, starting in verse 19. The Lord has established His throne in the heavens, and His sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you His angels, mighty in strength to perform His word, obeying the voice of His word. Bless the Lord, all you His hosts, who serve Him, doing His will. Bless the Lord, all you works of His, in all places of His dominion, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Church, we are gathered together today to bless the name of the Lord. His name alone is worthy. His name alone is exalted. Let's bless Him together. Sing it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh.
Baptist Church. Sing it out. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh. Amen. So we come to give our offering today. I'm going to ask two men to come and uh, lead us. Brother Elbert, I want you to come and pray for us. And Buddy High Note, would, would you come? I, I bet you guys don't even know each other, do you? Yeah, I didn't think you did. Uh, Elbert joined our church the Sunday that we met at the University of West Florida to raise money to build this building. That was the Sunday he walked forward over there in the UWF uh, field house. And then been off on mission, come back. And I want you to pray right up there, Elbert first, and then Brother Buddy, I want you to follow him and pray over our offering today. Would you do that? Just follow Brother Elbert right there. Now, before 47 of y'all have a heart attack today, if you will give enough, I will turn the light back on on that stained glass window that's up there. Now, just listen to me. We just had an electrical issue this morning, and it's out, all right? John Tanner did not turn that light off, all right? <laughs> but if we have to blame somebody, we know who to go to, all right? Amen. Uh, but we'll get that fixed, so don't worry about it. And Alan will get that done this week. And that's the way, Alan. That's, that's the way you do right there. Amen. Hey, I want you to give your tithe and offering unto the Lord. These two gentlemen are going to pray over us. Then the choir, orchestra, Rachel is going to come and sing. And then we'll open the Word of God to Psalm 20, Psalm 21. Warfare, praying. We need to learn to do better. God be our teacher. Elbert, pray for us. Buddy, pray over us. And let's ask God's blessing on these gifts today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and pray and, and praise your holy name, Father. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this service that we're about to attend and we ask that you'll be with our pastor uh, continue to be with our pastor and just uh, give him your full uh, wisdom and uh, understanding as he delivers your message today and father we ask that you'll place your hand on those who have unspoken prayers and uh, just uh, just deliver any needs that are here today and we ask that you will do this in jesus name amen Precious Lord, as we reflect upon your goodness and grace to us today, how you've loved us, how you've demonstrated that love to us in so many ways, but, uh, and how you gave your son as a ransom for our sin, Lord. We're certainly thankful, and we worship your holy name today. Lord, um, being mindful of our many blessings, Lord, encourage us to give back to you so that your kingdom might be progressed throughout this world and in our community. Amen. Lord, help us to have open hearts, open minds to what you're going to speak to us today through your word. Yes, Lord. But help us to be a giving people, Lord, as you have given to us. I agree, Father. Give you your praise. We praise your holy name today, and thank you so much for loving us. And for my brother, I thank you today. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Makes me want to shout. Yeah. Take your Bible, go to the 20th Psalm, Psalm 20 and 21. Now on Wednesday nights, John and the choir rehearse, and so this is a new day and a new beginning and his ministry here and our ministry with him. And so uh, if you'd like to be a part of that and think maybe you could or should, then uh, you join them on Wednesdays. Uh, I, I've had uh, many people, really few people many times, have tried to get me to move lots of these chairs in these side areas and put some stuff up there. And I've just been stubborn and said, I, I really have believed that the day could come that this congregation could sustain filling those chairs in our music ministry. And so uh, we've never done that. We, we've never done that. Uh, but there's a lot of things we've not done we ought to do. And that would be uh, one of those. That would be really a good goal uh, to spill over into that. And uh, So if you uh, think maybe that is a place you could serve, you check that out on Wednesday night. Now, some of you don't need to apply. All right. uh, and, and I'll help you with that if, uh, if I need to. But some of you would even surprise yourself. Uh, you don't have to be a trained vocalist to be in this choir. So uh, you, uh, you come. They'll help teach you. If that's, you. The only reason you ought to come is because the Holy Ghost of God tells you that's your place. Sir, and if that's for you, then uh, this is a good day to encourage John and just obey the Lord. Psalm 20 and 21 are like bookends that would hold truth together. Psalm 20 and Psalm 21 are all about prayer and intercession of war. Psalm 20 is the prayer before the king goes to war. Psalm 21 is the intercession of praise after the war. And this morning as we approach the king going to war, we're in chapter 20. You can go on and read chapter 21 and you'll see the prayer and praise for victory. That would come afterward. We are in a war, and we need to learn how to battle in that war on our knees, and Psalm 20 helps us with that. So you look with me at Psalm 20, beginning in verse 1, where the Bible says, notice all these first four verses begin with the same word and end with the same punctuation. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. May he send you to help, may he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. May he remember all your meal offerings and find your burnt offerings acceptable. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your counsel. We will sing for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some boast in chariots and some boast in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stood upright. Save, O Lord. May the king answer us in the day we call. Look at verse 1, part A. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. We are in a day of trouble. The church has always lived in that troublesome tension because we are in a war. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 in verse 12 to fight the good fight of faith. We're in a war. We're in a fight. In Ephesians 6, Paul said to the church at Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. And then he goes on to say to take those all up with prayer and to pray without stopping, that we are to be filled with the spirit of intercession and prayer if we're going to fight the fight of faith. Now, we've got an enemy Satan is that one. 
He is eager to destroy every family. And that includes yours. He's eager to destroy every nation, and that includes ours. He is eager to destroy every church, and that includes Olive. He is eager to destroy every person, and that includes you. He has come to seek and to kill and destroy. If you are a Christ follower, he hates you. And he will destroy you and he will destroy us by any means possible. He attacks our testimony. He attacks our unity. He attacks our effectiveness. If he can destroy our testimony in the world, he's been successful. He often will destroy our testimony by attacking our unity. If he can simply divide the people of God and get them to yeah, yeah at each other rather than to go to war with the devil, he's got us where he wants us. He'll just cause a small crevice. Fill it with water, let it freeze and then thaw and crack it wider. Before you know it, you got a pothole and everybody's driving around a different way and they're cursing the pothole rather than fixing. It's a lot easier in the church just to curse the problem than it is to pray and to war on your knees. But while we have a wicked enemy, never forget the devil is afraid of prayer because prayer blunts and vaporizes and evaporates the weapons of the wicked and it is done with the divine laser of intercession we need to learn to be warriors on our knees battling for the spiritual well-being of our church of our family of our nation of our own soul. So this month I'm looking at passages that will be familiar and some not so familiar like this one and trying to move our church to intercession to a greater prayer emphasis and then I'm going to ask you at the end of the month to sign up and I'm going to be sending you some things to pray about if if you would put your name on a list that I can email to you or get it to you and I want you to join with me between now and Easter, that that we pray as a family and that we do it together. How do we become warfare prayers? Well, this text helps us. And I want to show you five simple truths out of this text. We need to learn to battle. Now, some of you say, Preacher, I don't even pray. I don't know how to pray. Let me tell you, here's a simple way to learn to pray. Take the Bible, read it, and pray what you read. Find truth. Just read the Psalms. And when you find a truth, pray it under the Lord. Write it down in a journal and just take it as a truth and pray it under the Father. I'm in the book of Jeremiah in my quiet times right now. I'm, I'm reading through Jeremiah. And the other day it just jumped out of me. That, well, Jeremiah is tough on preachers. I mean, really tough. Matter of fact, he's used one phrase, and, and I'm preaching a sermon entitled, Stupid Shepherds. That's what he says right in the book. Now, I'll get in trouble for this, because at my house, there's now a little one that comes to visit, and I'll use sometimes words, and, and my children say, you can't say that in front of tender ears. And stupid's one of those words. It's in the book. <laughs> stupid parenting's in the book, too. I got a PhD in that. Find what's in the book. Truth. And pray it unto the Lord. You say, well, that truth is not true about me. Glory to God. Count as if it is so when it's not so in order that it can be so. When you find truth, just because you're not living up to it doesn't mean it's not true. 
Matter of fact, it means God wants it to be true in your life even when it's not true. So when it's not true, pray it might be true so that it will be true. That's called praying by faith. It's warfare praying. Learn to pray. So preacher, I just don't know how. Get this book, a little journal, some paper, and just find truth, write it down, and tell God. I'm telling you, he'll teach you to pray. He'll help you learn. I'm still learning. I want us to learn together. If we're going to be warfare prayers, and I find warfare praying is the greatest level. There's asking and seeking and knocking and some other. But I'm telling you, when you, when you learn to enter into warfare praying, you, you've entered a high level and a deep concentration of intercession. What is it we need to do? How do we learn? Well, let's look at these five truths about warfare praying. Number one. Warfare praying trusts God for victory. Doesn't trust ourselves, doesn't trust the church, doesn't trust the preacher, it trusts God. Notice it in verse number one. He says, when you're in a day of trouble, may the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. The God of Jacob. He did not say the God of Abraham. He did not say the God of Isaac. He said the God of Jacob. So what's he mean by the God of Jacob? You go back to Genesis 32 and you read about Jacob. You know Jacob's brother's name was Esau, Jacob Esau had trouble and Esau became the powerful one and he went out and Jacob got scared because Esau was coming home and was going, he's fixing to level the deal. And Esau was fixing to bring the wood to Jacob and Jacob got scared. So Jacob backed up and he started sending people. He said, take this out there and go out. And he sent people out in front of him and he kept bribing. He said, take that and give it to him. Take that and give it to him. Read it to him in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. Then the Bible says that Jacob went across the brook and he spent the night on the other side of the river. And when he did, you remember what happened? Oh, he ran into the angel of God. God incarnate. I believe it was Jesus myself. Can't prove it, but I, I believe he wrestled with the Lord certainly with an angel. And the Bible says that when he rose up, the next day his, his hip was, was out of socket, remember? And, and Jacob walked with a limp. And it says to this day that the Jewish people do not eat of, of a certain portion uh, around the, of meat around that joint of an animal. And God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Came God's prince. What God wants to do in your life is back you so far in a corner that you have to trust God and God alone, not your mama, not your daddy, not your brother, not your church, not your pastor. You don't even trust yourself. You trust God and God alone. And when he gets you there, you're fixing to name the place Peniel, and God is going to do a work in you, and he leads us. When we pray by warfare praying, we have learned to trust God and God alone. The greatest enemy to overcome in warfare praying is fear. Because we began to fear we don't have faith. But when you've got faith, you've got to put fear out of the way. You say, well, preacher, I'm scared. Well, you've you got to move from that and believe God. You get a word from God, the truth of God, you stand on it. Come hell or high water, you stand by faith. And if I said it at my house, my kids would say, you can't say that. <laughs> well, come real hard things. You've got to trust God. You got to live by Genesis 32 faith, even when you're across the river and you have anybody to trust. You've sent all everybody out you've got, but all that's done. And you know what happened? Esau came and he really didn't want to have war. He came and put his arms around his brother, and God answered Jacob's prayer. Warfare praying. Trust God for victory. Number two, not only is warfare praying, trust God for it. Warfare praying unites with other people of faith. Notice in verse number two, may he send you help. When you're in trouble, may God send you help from where? The sanctuary. And support you from Zion. The sanctuary is where the people of God would gather. This was the temple, the tabernacle of the Old Testament. May he send you help from the sanctuary, from Zion's hill. This is where the people of God gathered. You see, friend, when you begin to pray as a warfare prayer, you don't, you don't pray by yourself. You unite with others. There, there is personal intercession, but now warfare praying 
locks arms with others. You get in a prayer group. You've got prayer partners. You go to prayer meetings. There are calls of prayer, and you get with that. This coming Wednesday is our first Wednesday prayer in November. We meet over here in the chapel, and we come together praying for America. We don't just say pray wherever you want to. We, we come together. Now, we do pray separately, but we come together on that first Wednesday. We're doing it in November. We'll do it in December, and then we'll be done. We've done it all, all year long. Not going to do it next year that way, but this year we did. I gathered in Dallas with a group of 178 pastors uh, just several weeks ago. It was a glory meeting when we came together, not praying on our own. All of us prayed on our own, but now we came together, and God invaded the praise and intercession of his people. On the seventh day of December this year, down on the beach at three o'clock in the afternoon, there's a group of people uh, that have called a CPR prayer meeting for Pensacola. Uh, that is Christians praying in repentance. That's what they're calling it, CPR. And, and I'd invite you to go if you can be there on that Saturday afternoon. It, it's another prayer gathering, praying over our city. What a great mindset that is. And so there'll be people down there that won't be like me. That's right. There'll be people there that are Baptists and Pentecostals and others that'll come together and we'll pray. It's a good thing. Let your help come from the sanctuary and from Zion. On the last day of this year, 1231 at 10 p.m., we'll meet right here to pray out the new year. We'll finish 2013 on our knees right here on the last day at 10 o'clock uh, on that evening for New Year's Eve prayer time. Then we'll go from here, start at 10 o'clock because I want to be home before the drunks are on the road. And uh, we come together. God, may, God comes. We may stay all night, but we're going to start at 10 o'clock. And we gather together. and say, I can't come. Well, you can come to some of these gatherings. What, what I'm telling you is your help comes from Zion. You are not a lone ranger prayer warrior. Your help comes from Zion. You need, that's why some of you that are in this room need to join Olive Baptist Church today. That's why some of you need to link your life with a local church. So some of you that are single adults and you're 25 or older and you, were, you grew up in the church and all of a sudden you don't need the church anymore. You've gone off to college and got real smart and, and now you just dropped in. Your mama makes you come every now and then and you feel guilty. I'm telling you, you need the church. And the church needs you. You need to be a part of that. You need to come home and be found faithful in the house of the living God. You need to come to the sanctuary. You need to come to Zion and join forces as a prayer warrior because Mature prayers pray with others. Immature prayers pray only by themselves. See, this is a battle song. When, when armies go out, they don't send one person out there. You only do that in the, on the silver screen when you got Arnold Schwarzenegger. You just send one guy, you know, he's the dude, and he goes out and he whips everybody, and the rest of the army stands back there. Cow no, no, it's not the way it works. You, you send all the troops. When you go into Normandy, you storm Normandy. You don't send one guy, you send them all. What we've got to learn to do is pray together. The unity of God's people, it pleases the Father. And the Bible says, Psalm 133, that the oil of God runs down on us when that unity comes. Warfare pray. Trust God alone. Warfare praying always unites with it. Number three, warfare praying comes from obedient Christ followers. Notice in verse number three, he says, may he remember all your meal offerings. He's praying that God would remember your meal offerings and find your burnt offering acceptable. It sounds to me like that the psalmist is saying you can give some offerings God doesn't even remember and you can give some offerings and God would say they're not acceptable. You know why that God remembers your offering? You know why God accepts your because you're walking in a life of obedience. If you're walking in disobedience, your offering means very little. Now, everyone in this room ought to be a tither. Only 23% are, but everybody in here ought to be a tither. Everybody ought to give the first fruit of your income. You ought to give it through the local church. So I'd rather give mine somewhere else. Well, if you're going to be a Bible student, you need to learn to know that the storehouse is the local church. So I don't like that. You don't have to like it. I'm just telling you that's the truth. It begins right here. Over and beyond, I give, to, I give to Billy Graham, my hope, all that that's going on, I'm giving to that. I help FCA on, on more than one campus, but that's always over and above what I put in that offering plate beginning with my local church where my first tenth comes, and then God blesses all beyond that. For some of you, the faith walk begins with just giving, but now watch this. For some of you that give a tithe, God does not accept your tithe because you're walking in a life of disobedience, and he doesn't even remember what you give. God loves a cheerful giver. Mm. 
He'll take it from a grumpy old person, but he loves a cheerful giver. And when you give, God remembers that. He's, it's all in the context of prayer. He makes you a prayer warrior when you're walking in obedience so that even your offering is pleasing unto the Father. Some of you ought to come here in just a minute. I'm going to give an invitation in a moment. John's going to come and play the piano and sing. And uh, that's, I, I love the way he, I've seen him do this before. And most of the time we'll do the invitation that way with him just at the piano singing and leading us. And when he, he sings, some of you will need to come. You're already members of this church. You just need to come and say, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you to be a tither. I got a letter from a lady yesterday. I saw her early this morning walking in. And, and she thanked me for 19, I think it was 93 or 4, when I challenged people about giving a year's income to this building. Try to pray to give a year's income. You give it over a certain uh, number of well, whatever you make. And over these next few years, you'd give that much to help us do what. And she said, Pastor, we wouldn't do anything. And boy, how God stretched us. And we were in debt. And she says, here we are these years later, almost 20 years later. And we're out of debt. And God's blessing. We're a tither. And she's, she just she wrote me a letter to thank me for challenging her to give. I'd never gotten a letter like that before. I've been thanked for a lot of stuff. I've been cussed for a lot of stuff. But I've never had anybody write me and say, thank you for teaching me to be a giver. Because there's great joy that came. And I'm telling you, when, when you learn to give by faith, and then you give and you live a life of obedience, you're ready to enter into warfare praying. Number four, warfare praying is not ashamed. It is never a shame. Look, look at it, verse 5 and 7. He says, we will sing for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners, our banners. Verse 7, some boast in chariots, some boast in horses. We'll boast in the name of the Lord our God. There is a boastful banner in the life of the intercessor, and he's never ashamed. He's lifting up Christ. He's lifting up Christ. He's lifting him up, 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 up. He flies the banner. The banner here is the war flag. A regiment will have a flag that, that goes with it. In the old westerns, you'd see the guy riding, he's got the red, white, and blue there. And if he gets shot, somebody else picks it up. And he carries the colors with him. There's, there's a flag, there's a banner. We, we set up a banner. That's the war banners that he's talking about there. And we know the colors. And we're, we're never ashamed of that. This is the side I'm on. Some boast in chariots, some boast in horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. The Bible says we have two banners. The people of God have two banners. Psalm 60 in verse 4 says our first banner is the banner of truth. There, there's a whole uh, uh, publishing house called Banner of Truth. It comes right out of Psalm 60 in verse 4. The banner of truth. We fly the banner of truth. We lift it up. When it comes to abortion, we speak to it out of Bible truth. When it comes to justice for the poor and the widow and the orphan and the immigrant, we speak to it out of Bible truth. And we challenge the people of God to be generous and loving and encouraging about justice and justice for all because the Bible speaks of it. We stand for truth with marriage. One man, one woman, one life. I noticed this weekend, West Point, first time in the West Point Chapel, two men were married on Saturday. A U.S. chaplain did the service for two men. They walked out. We call that sin, and we don't back up from it. We fly the banner of truth. That is not marriage. That's ungodliness. So we fly the banner of truth. But now there's another banner we fly. Song of Solomon 2.4 says that his banner over us is love. We fly the banner of truth. We fly the banner of love. When those two men walk out of that chapel smiling and we say we disagree, that's not marriage, I don't know what you did, but you went out. And then when they walk out of that chapel, we do not tell them, well, go to hell. We love them in Jesus' name and try to win them to faith in Christ. And even if they don't repent, we love them still. We don't agree, but we show compassion. Paul said it, that we are to speak the truth in love. We are to love our Lord. We are to love our neighbor. We are to love our enemy. The banner over the church is the love. We, we love the Lord. We, we love him with all our heart, with all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. You, you love Christ first and foremost. Number two, you love your neighbor. You know, it's easier to love your neighbor if you find out their name. 
It, it'll help you love your neighbor if you find out what their name is. It really will. I shared with you a while back that I got a letter, had $500 in it, and it, it, it was mailed to my address, and I, I, I didn't know who it was. It, it had my number address on it, it had somebody else's name, and I didn't know who that person was. Uh, it took me about a month, but I found them. And they wept, and they wept. They'd been hunting this money, they'd been looking for this money. I said, well, I've had it down on my desk, I just couldn't find it. It was a neighbor, not next door, down the road a piece, but I finally found them. I had to talk to another neighbor who said, well, I know a lady that lives over there and her first name is that, but that wasn't her last name I knew and maybe that's her and I went over there and I knocked on the door and she came to the door and I said, I have a piece of mail. She says, I have $500 in it. <laughs> she loves her neighbor. <laughs> Amen. It'll help you if you just get to know their name. You gotta love the Lord, you gotta love your neighbor. But now, you got to love your enemies. And we got them, haven't we? If you think the church hadn't got enemies, phew. if you're standing for Christ, you've got enemies. They, they'll come against you. But you got to love them in Jesus' name. I, I was watching this week. I, I, I try to watch less and less and less of cable news. Uh, I get more depressed and more depressed and more depressed. But I did watch Miss Sebelius this week, and uh, just a first part uh, of the dialogue they had with her about the uh, health care deal. I was amazed. On, on this side, you have the Republicans asking questions. And they treated that woman like she was a Nazi sympathizer. Unbelievable. They wouldn't even let her answer a question. They asked a question, she'd say, well, and then bam, they hit her again. Well, I'm trying to, bam, they hit her again. And I thought, boy, that is wonderful. Now, they, this is really, really good. This is going to be profitable. Dumb. Then the person would be on the other side, and they have a D, but their name is a Democrat, and they treated her like she was their little sister. And when they threw a question at her, it was like, here it comes. Boom! And I thought, in Jesus' name, is there not one statesman on the hill? Is there not somebody that can reach and get truth and love and bring those together to solve a problem? Do they not reside in the nation's capital? Are we so, now watch this, if we're not careful in the church, we'll just be all truth tellers and tell all that bunch that doesn't keep the truth, go to hell in Jesus' name. This is the truth. I know that crowd, I've been that crowd. But then there's this other crowd, bleeding heart Christians. It doesn't matter what you do, we just love you. And oh yes, and it's okay, and beat your wife, it's okay, come on over. Kick your kids, it's all right. Spend all the money on alcohol. Don't feed the baby. We'll just love you and give you more money. Is there not a churchman in the place? Is there not a Holy Ghost filled person that can speak the truth with love and meet needs and at the same time hold up a standard? That is our job. Let me tell you, you cannot do that on your own in the flesh. It takes the power of warfare praying to come to that place in your life. I'm not saying it's easy. No, I'm talking about today's easy. But I'm telling you, it's true. And it's God's way. And warfare prayer is never ashamed, always lifting up the banner of truth and the banner of love. It is never ashamed to speak the truth, and it's never ashamed to love the sinner. And you draw those things together and put your arms around people that you would never hug before, and you'd speak truth to people that do not want to hear it. Hmm. It's not easy. But warfare praying brings us to that place that we don't just mean and we're not just soft. We're discerning and wise and calling out to God. There's a fifth thing, and I want you to see this quickly. Warfare praying also battles for lost souls. It battles 
for lost souls. Look, look at it down in verse number 9. Save, O Lord. May the king answer us in the day we call. Save, O Lord. The word O is not even in the Hebrew. It's just save, Lord. Lord, save. We need to be people of evangelism. Seeing people saved, saved, saved. Now, Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 2 and 3, have a great call there, where Jesus said to his disciples, they had gathered together, and he said, the fields are white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. Beseech ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest, period. And we stop right there. But you ought to go read verse 3. He says in verse 2, big harvest, no laborers, pray God send them. In verse 3, he begins with the word, Go. <laughs> the same people he's telling to pray for laborers now, he turns around and says, go. We are not just to pray for God to send laborers, but as we pray, we go. God send other laborers to help us. We're on the way out the door with a track in our pocket. It's what he calls us to do. And we battle. We battle. Let me tell you, you're not a warfare praying individual if you hadn't got several names of lost people in your prayer journal that you're calling their name to heaven. You've not learned about warfare praying yet. If, if you don't have A, B, C, and D, if, if you don't have that, that, and you're calling their name to the Lord, and you're saying, Lord, save, Lord, save, Lord, save. On behalf of the pastor and church family at Olive Baptist Church, thank you for joining us in worship. Copies of today's service are available in audio and video formats. Call us toll free at 1-877-OLIVE-BC to place your order. Dr. Trailer's sermons, along with information about Olive, are also available on the internet by visiting olivebaptist.org.